Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing the what's next on Jamal Charlo, the undefeated um, but longtime inactive WBC middleweight champion of the world following his comeback fight that took place at super middleweight technically as he defeated Jose Benavidez Jr. by a 10 round unanimous decision. Now before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So this uh, fight between um, Charlo and Benavidez was the co-feature to David Benavidez and um, <clears throat> Demetrius Andre for the interim super middleweight title on November 25th on Showtime pay-per-view. Um, Charlo, you know, looked solid in this fight, but I think Benavidez was a guy that you look solid against. And he also came in about three or four pounds heavier than the agreed upon weight of 163. I think that's ticky tack bullshit right there on Charlo's part. You know, you don't need to do that kind of shit. Um, uh, and because it gives, it gives an unfair advantage and Charlo is already the naturally bigger guy. But, you know, people are gonna kind of overlook that uh, as most people do. And now the big question is what's next for Jamal Charlo? Well, Charlo is do, is going to do the Canelo dance. We know he's he's a significant uh, candidate for Canelo's next fight in May. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to run through the guys at 160 really fast and then 168 to see what options there are besides Canelo. And then I'll give my prediction on what I think uh, is going to happen next for Jamal Charlo. So we start with um, 160. Um, Carlos Adamas, his interim champion. I think that's probably the most likely option at 160 for him because that's his mandatory uh, title defense right there. And I think just to hold on to that belt a little while longer, if Canelo decides to fight Munguia and Charlo doesn't decide to fight David Benavidez, um, then I think Charlo might might take on Adamas, but I really believe that Charlo might be done with 160 pounds. He just wants to wait and see. Then there's Jonabek Alaman Halai, um, the unified champion at 160. I don't think this is a fight, a unification bout with Jonabek is, is something Charlo's gonna consider, at least not next, even if he holds on to his WBC belt. I, I just don't see it. Liam Smith um, would be a good one, but Liam Smith's coming off of a loss to Chris Eubank. I just don't think that really sells a lot for Charlo to cut, to fight a guy coming off a loss. Um, Arizlandi Lara, that would be great because it's an easy fight to make because they're both PBC guys, but Lara has to fight, um, he's supposed to fight Danny Garcia next at a catch weight um, in a fight that's been long you know, overdue uh, in terms of when it was agreed upon. And then he has a mandatory due right after that against Michael Zarafa. So I don't believe him and Charlo can happen next, even if the two sides wanted to make it happen. Maybe the WBA would approve if the Danny Garcia fight gets scratched. Maybe the WBC would approve of them unifying belts then because they already agreed for Lara to fight, um, you know, Lara to fight, uh, um, Danny Garcia, but um, I, I'm just right now, I'm not seeing that for Charlo. Then there's uh, Chris Eubank Jr. I mean, if Charlo wanted this fight, he could have it. Eubank's looking for the big fights, and Charlo could have it, but I don't think Charlo is going to be interested in this fight, and I honestly think that these guys uh, would be more likely to fight at 168 if he was an option, but I just don't think Charlo is going to go down this road with Eubank even though it's a very makeable fight for him. Then there's uh, former champion Vicente Gaultieri. He got dominated against Jonabek. I don't see Charlo giving him the time of day. Um, Esquiva Falchao, former world title challenger. He works with top rank and he's kind of a no name and I don't see Charlo except taking that. Undefeated Felix Cash. Um, he's an undefeated British fighter, but he doesn't have a big name. I don't see Charlo interested there. And then Liam Williams, former world title challenger, 
uh, just another Englishman that I don't think Charlo would be interested in. So from 160, I think the more the most likely options are really only Carlos Adames um, because that's his mandatory challenger. I could definitely see though Lara and Eubank being in the mix if Charlo wanted to go that route, but I really don't think he does. Now to 168, Canelo Alvarez. I think that's very possible that Charlo could get Canelo because Charlo fights, um, you know, Charlo's a big name and Canelo just beat his, his brother, who's the smaller Charlo. And Canelo kind of wants, from what uh, we're hearing, Canelo wants to take a softer touch fight in May um, ahead of a potential David Benavidez clash in September and Charlo fits that bill and he's the biggest name of, well he's the bigger name between him and Manguia because the third option is Terrence Bud Crawford which I don't believe that that's likely between Crawford and Canelo because uh, Crawford has a mandatory rematch with Errol Spence Jr. that I think is gonna happen so it's gonna be interesting to see what takes place here um, you know, with the Canelo dance, but I definitely think Charlo is in the serious mix to land the Canelo fight. Next up is David Benavides. Um, if Canelo decides to go with Munguia or Terrence Crawford in May, then the David Benavides fight is very possible um, between, uh, you know, between Canelo and, I mean, between Charlo and Benavides. But Charlo's gonna have to want the fight because Benavidez has already said that if he doesn't get Canelo in May, he wanted he wants to make the fight with Charlo, so Canelo has no excuse, no more excuses to not fight him. And um, and I like that ploy. And David David, you know, can want the fight all he wants, but Charlo's gonna have to want that fight. Now I don't completely rule it out that Charlo might might take that fight. But ultimately, I don't think he, he wants uh, that Benavidez smoke right now. I don't think he takes that fight, so I don't see it. Then there's Caleb Plant. Um, Caleb Plant slapped the shit out of Charlo in that parking garage. Have everybody seen that video? Um, I do believe it's an option if Canelo goes in another direction. It's an option for Charlo. Um, but I honestly don't think he takes on Plant. Plant is a very good boxer. And I don't think Charlo uh, wants to take on a guy with Plant style, to be honest. And Plant has a good chin as well. So Charlo not likely to knock him out. I think he'd have to uh, win a, a decision. And that's going to be difficult against uh, the guy with the style like Plant. John Ryder. John Ryder is fighting Jaime Manguia in January. And I think Ryder would be totally down to fight Charlo. And I'll be honest. If Ryder was willing to come to wherever the PBC is next, um, I think Charlo would be down to fight him. You know, I think that's a fight that can be made, especially if Canelo goes in another direction. I think Charlo might be down to fight Ryder because he's there to be hit, and Charlo might use the angle that he's gonna look better against Ryder than Canelo did. But Ryder would have to beat Munguia first. That, to me, is close to a 50-50 fight. So it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see if that's an option. I'm leaning towards the less likely, but I wouldn't completely rule it out either. Demetrius Andre. Andre has a very difficult style, and he's coming off the loss to Benavidez. So right now, Charlo's going to use that that as, uh, you know, oh, I don't need to fight this guy now. He's coming off the loss, which is legit, and Charlo does have other options uh, that are more beatable to Charlo's style. So that is valid. Then there's uh, Jaime Munguia. Uh, if Munguia beats Ryder in January, and for some reason Canelo doesn't fight Munguia or Charlo next, like it say the Terrence Crawford fight becomes available, or Canelo wants to fight, uh, what's his name, um, Benavidez in May. I think Charlo would potentially fight a guy like Munguia next to try to land the Canelo fight come September or October or, or whenever that, you know, the second the second fight of the year and the last fight of the PBC contract, I think Charlo would try to get a bigger name in the ring that's hittable like Manguia. But 
my personal opinion is that Canelo is, is going to fight either Munguia or Charlo in May. So I don't think they would be available to fight each other. Um, Sergey Derevchenko in a rematch, not seeing it. He handled Derevchenko years ago, and Derevchenko's coming off of a close loss to Munguia anyways. There'd be no reason for Charlo Derevchenko too. Um, David Morrell Jr., Charlo is not going to fight David Morrell. He's way too high, high risk um, right now for Charlo. Vladimir Shishkin, I don't see that one. That'd be a full pledge to 168. And um, I don't think Charlo is willing to take the risk to fight a guy like Shishkin. And then there's Edgar Berlanga. Berlanga's coming back in early in the year. Um, he's a DAZN guy. Uh, not going to completely rule a fight like this out because it's a big fight, and I think Berlanga would be down for it. But I'm not sure Charlo would be, but I think Charlo would probably be the favorite going into that fight. So I think it would make sense, especially if he doesn't get the Canelo fight, to try to fight somebody that has a beatable, hittable style like Berlanga. So that's it. Now, overall, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I really believe that... Um, there's probably most likely two options between the two weight classes, real options. I think Carlos Adamas at 160 makes a lot of sense because if he were to move back down in his next fight and beat Adamas, he wouldn't have to make a mandatory for a while after that. And he'd be the favorite going in. But he'd have to move back down to 160. But I'm gonna be honest, I really think Charlo is the front runner to get Canelo. Reasons why is, one, Munguia is gonna be taken off the table if he loses to John Ryder in January. And I think that's possible. Um, but even if he wins, he's not a PBC guy. He's just not. So um, the PBC is gonna push their guys first. And Charlo's a bigger name than Manguia anyways, and Canelo just beat Charlo's brother. They can build on that for the next fight. Um, and also, you know, again, I don't believe Terrence Crawford is going to be an option because I think he's going to have a rematch with Errol Spence. So I really believe, if you put a gun to my head right now, Canelo's next fight is going to be Jamal Charlo. So we'll see what happens. Um, there are other options, and it really depends on what Canelo decides to do next. But Jamal Charlo is back, and I think he's in that position where he has to take higher risk fights. So we'll see what happens. That's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on the undefeated WBC middleweight champion of the world, Jamal Charlo, following his 10-round unanimous decision victory over Jose Benavidez Jr. as they met at a catchweight. Um, on November 25th on the Showtime pay-per-view card as they were the co-feature. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.